Hi there, and welcome to the Huntsman Society gameplay explanation video. This game is all about treasure hunting and becoming the greatest huntsman of all time. The game consists of three piles, red, green and blue cards. Let's start with the red cards. These are treasure cards. On a treasure card there is a description of what the treasure is all about and the amount of points that is worth, the value of the card. Before you start the game, you and your opponent decide how many points you will need in order to win the game and become the greatest huntsman of the society. The start of the game, you will put four of these cards face down on the table. The second card is the green card. This is a location card. A location card tells you everything you need to know in order for your team to achieve its goal to finding the treasure. You will find what kind of type of vehicle it needs, either land, water or air and the amount of skill set that your team needs in order to obtain the treasure. This consists of strength, courage and inventiveness. You will place the location cards open on the treasures. Four cards is what you will need to put on the table. The third pile is the blue pile. It consists of four types of cards. Explorers, vehicles, stuff and events. You will need to assemble a group of explorers to go to a location. The location will tell you the requirements the team needs in order for them to find the treasure. There's strength, courage and inventiveness points that need to be met. The team can only travel to a location if they have the right vehicle, either land, water or air. During their quest, the team can bring stuff. The stuff will help them to overcome obstacles. And these obstacles are in the event cards. There's positive event cards. They have a plus on them. They will help your team and you can play them on your own teams. And there's negative event cards that you can play on your opponent's team. They will make their quest harder. And then there's a flag symbol on some of these cards. These are undecided cards yet. You place them on the location, altering the storyline of the location for every team that gets there. Every player gets 10 cards in their hand. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 19, 20. Whoever traveled the furthest in the last 30 days gets to start the game. I've got 10 cards in my hand and normally I won't show them to my opponent, but for explanation purposes I will now play with an open hand. I've got two explorers, three vehicles, two stuff cards, and three event cards. At this moment, I don't meet the requirements of any of the location cards to send my exploration team on a successful journey. This means that I can take three cards in my turn and discard them. And I can take three new cards from the blue pile. Ah, a good hand. My opponent also just discarded three of his cards, which makes it my turn again. This time, I do meet the requirements for my team to go to a location. So let's see how we do that. Oh, by the way, it's good behavior in this game to play the game out loud, which makes for good storytelling. So I'm going to send my vehicle, in this case a Rotarium Mac P12, to the Lost Library of the Parrots. And the team is being led by Alistair O'Carry. He brings two extra explorers to the game. This is a good set of cards. I don't place them actually necessarily on the location, but a little distance from the location. This means that at this moment they are still traveling. I have still some cards left and actually my team can also go to Snail Mountain, which means that I will also take a boat and Arnold Francesco together with two staff cards that will help him on his journey, also on a quest. Again, I put them here so that they're still traveling. I see my competitor has joined the quest because he has also two teams traveling. It's my turn again, which means that my teams will now reach the location. First, I put them on the table to travel. In this turn, they've reached their location. It's always the next turn after they start traveling. First thing I'm going to do is look at my cards and play event cards, both on my competitor. In this case, I will let him encounter a secret code. At this moment, this will block him from achieving his goals. I will also play a positive event card on my own team. In this case, my team found a bag of coins. 
if my team finds the treasure, I can add an extra treasure point to my treasure point total. Next up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the dice. The location card tells me which numbers I can roll to find the treasure. Always tell your opponent for which team of explorers you're going to throw the dice. So I'm now going to throw the dice for this team. I need a three or a six. A three. Hooray. My team found the treasure. The following things will happen. I take the location card away. I conquered this location. I found the treasure. In this case, I'm going to look at what I found. <gasps> the secret savings of Archie McGiffen. Four treasure points are mine to take. I will immediately place a new treasure and a new location on the table. A new location means that me and my competitor have to take our cards back. My competitor can discard the event card that has been blocking him. I also get to take my cards back. As you remember, I had eight cards at this moment in my hand because I played the two event cards. I get four cards back, which means that I'm now stuck with 12 cards. That's too much. I only can have 10 cards at the end of my round. Let me discard these two. In short, these are the rules of the game and this is the rhythm of the game. Don't worry, every player has a cheat sheet. So you can always see what to do next and what certain icons mean. Remember, play this game out loud. It's so much more cool because it's a storytelling game. Every card is unique, so every story is unique. Thank you for watching and welcome to the Huntsman Society.